Hello, everyone. This is Jen Berryhill joining you with Moons of Ascension. And this is podcast number three for this channel. And I'm extremely excited to be joined today with a very good friend of mine. Her name is Abby Lynn. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. And we're going to dive into a really fun conversation today for our podcast in, in October. We're kind of in the new moon energies. There's an eclipse energy as well going on. So I'm just super excited to be here and see where our energy wants to take us today. So Abby Lynn is a multidimensional energy healer. She's a Reiki master teacher and intuitive reader. After pursuing a career in television production, writing and broadcast journalism, Abby finally decided to embrace her lifelong gifts of spiritual communication and connection in order to help others by opening and sharing the world beyond the veil. So awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's always a good time when I get to be around your energy. <laughs> it's yeah. just an absolute, it's, a, it's an absolute treat. Um, to be around someone who is so grounded in themselves, grounded in such a beautiful connection with this planet, this place that we chose to come to. Sometimes I feel like I, you know, I'm sure so many at home feel like, what was I thinking? Why did I do this? Because <laughs> it gets a little bit, it gets a little bit heavy um, at times. So that's kind of where I was, you know, reflecting today. I'm just going to go straight into it. I was reflecting today, um, some of the people that I left to come here to do this life mission. And, you know, so many at home, you know, where a lot of people struggle with the feelings of being alone. And I think some of that might come from a subconscious knowing that we left others, loved ones, families, friends, connections, um, to come and do this and do this in very vital, important work here. Um, you know, it's, it's not, it's not always an easy thing being a light being and being in this physical vessel, this physical avatar and being more constrained and, and working so hard to bring memories through. And, and especially when your soul knows that you've had lifetimes of being really connected to a place and then we're around all these people that aren't connected <laughs> to this environment to this beautiful beautiful consciousness that we get to walk on every day it's it's inter it's it, it's an interesting I don't know why I just want to say like bifurcation but I do but did you say bifurcation yes I don't know why that just popped in my head but it did <laughs> yeah you know and that's kind of a good segue because you know I wanted to find out in your words because you talk about being a multi-dimensional healer so in your words what is exactly being multi-dimensional and and how do you translate that into your healing work that you do um you know how I interpret that being multi-dimensional is <sighs> when we're tapping in and we're working on moving energy again this is just this is an energetic being this avatar that we are in when we're coming in when we're working on healing it and again I want to preface all healing comes from within but you can have teachers and mentors to come in and hold the space to help move that energy around working with the body someone else is like a client's body your own body um, but you know true healing comes from within but multi-dimensional healing is it comes from so many different places. It can come from so many different places. And I, I work with beings that come from different dimensions um, and, and different levels of understanding of what healing looks like, different mo healing modalities that come in from different dimensions. Um, you know, the Arcturians came in and, and they taught me how you can do acupressure and some tonal, literally, it's 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 you're almost using a frequency that is that can come in like a laser beam. But again, it's frequency, it's light frequency that comes in, and you can actually bring that in through the body. And you know, other beings have come in and they bring in more healing messages from the heart. 
And when you're flexing those and you're speaking through that throat chakra, just releasing that energy brings healing. And especially when you're working with the throat and the heart, because those two are so tightly wound and connected. And so when you're speaking through the heart, those height by those heart vibrational messages, that is healing as well. And then you have my work within the angelic realm and they are very vocal. So you're holding in frequency, tonal frequency singing that can come in because again, it makes the body vibrate. My clients have said, when you, when you were hitting that note, how did you do that? My brain was vibrating when you were hitting that particular tone. And again, it's just bringing in those frequencies. And so that to me is multidimensional because when you surrender, and that is a very important part of this work is just being in a place of surrendering to it. And it's not surrendering as though I am less than I am, you know, not, I don't want this feeling of like, I surrender. It's that's not what it is. It's surrendering, opening up to yourself, to your highest potential. Again, it's surrendering and bringing forward who we've been in other lifetimes. And that's what comes through in trusting that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in that kind of theme of surrender, you know, to, to activate and bring in frequencies, do you find that you're also doing some clearing work as well, like removing energetic blocks and things like that? And do the star nations come in and help you with that or help your clients with that? Yeah. Yes. You know, and one thing that um, was really interesting, because again, as the, the more you you're working with within this field, I'm going to say like that quantum field, you're always learning and growing. So I'm always learning new things, new modalities coming through. And I had this sh shaman like man come in and he was teaching me all about the energy meridians that are around the body. And he was literally standing there he, and he was guiding me saying, now put your hands here and make this note. Now put your hands here and make this note. And it was not that he was saying, you know, like make a C5. He was holding that note and then I was matching his pitch. And, you know, and they even come in and they say, hold it, hold it stronger, back off. Now you're done. Hold it one more time. And, you know, and so that's the level of guidance that they'll come in um, within that service and teaching again, it's, you know, it's teaching the different things and, and each body when you're working on it needs something different at a, at a different time. But, you know, one thing I, I, I vet very strongly um, as to who gets to come in. So, you know, I'm not just loosey goosey out there and saying, oh, whatever shows up, shows up. I, you know, it's all about that intention work, really creating that space. Um, and and the, the majority of what comes in are past teachers of mine, very dear close friends, best friends of mine, mentors, um, and sometimes other lifetime members, like family members who I've worked with, work colleagues will come in. And it's really interesting because it's not that I recognize their face. Once I see them, it's not, oh my gosh, it's you. It's I, the feeling when their energy comes in, it's that instant knowing of, I know this, I know this energy. I know. And then it then begins to like unpack that way. And then you understand, oh my goodness. Yes. I feel you. I see you. I see you. And that's a beautiful spot. Yeah. And I love, I love that you hold such great integrity and you can really feel it, you know, just, I, you feel so heart centered and just really, you know, like really confident in, in what you're doing as your work. So, you know, how did, how did you develop that? And, you know, just take us a little bit on, on your journey. Like when did it all, when do you remember it all starting for you? <laughs> so how did I come from? <laughs> come from um, just a, a kid from Ohio, a little river rat to what I'm doing right now. <laughs> um, you know, so if we're going to go all the way back, um, when I was a toddler, I was visited and I would share it with my family. And um, I loved I, actually the, the active memories that I have still now, because I've also dealt with repressed memories and brought this forward as, as well, um, was it was always in a place of teaching. It was always bringing me back up with the, my loved ones, with my other family, and it was teaching. And it was always, you need to remember who you are. 
You need to remember who you are. And even in my dreams of, of teachers coming in and, and showing me, uh, it, it reminds me um, a lot. I don't know if you've seen the movie Aquaman, um, but it, there's a scene in that and it's uh, Willem Dafoe and he's looking down at young Aquaman and, and he, was, he was sent to be his teacher. Um, to, so that he would have that connection with the sea and awaken his abilities because obviously his mother couldn't be there. It was very much so that type of a relationship um, where, you know, we're here to work, I'm here to teach you, but it's so that I could get from this to where I'm meant to be. So that was the feeling that I had. So I always had that in my life, but then also um, I... It took me a long while because I separated them. I had a lot of paranormal experience with, um, you know, seeing shadow figures and always, always feeling being watched. Um, there'd be figures going around the corners of my wall, you know, rooms watching me and um, hearing spirit in my house. And no matter where I lived, it was always haunted. Um, you know, it was actually, it, was, it wasn't until I was in my 20s and I found a a beautiful medium, a psychic medium. And I began to go and see her, um, you know, twice a year for years. And I know I told her, I go, why is it every single place I moved to? It's all, ha I was always haunted. And she just laughed and she, and she said, it's you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> she goes, when, when you're, when you're sensitive and you can tune into beyond the veil, as we say it, they they attract to you and because they know oh, she's seeing me she can feel me and when they get that interaction then you get more of that um but in in all reality it was and i didn't know how to merge the two for so long it actually took me into my 20s until i figured out because i had memories of past lives i had all of this spiritual activity hauntings ghosts and then i had all this galactic side and so I, I, they were to me very different and separate worlds. And I always called it my secret life. You know, rarely did anyone truly know about my secret life. Um, but all the while I was, you know, my mother, thank God for her, she had amazing books in the house because um, she was herself awakening to what she was and, and the interests. And so I had um, some really good literature that I, you know, I read a lot heavily all through high school and through college all about um, like the Celestian prophecy. I read those books and a lot about um, was it many lives, many masters, all those Brian Newton books. Um, so I was always reading those. I, I never read like the silly novels. I, I was, if I'm going to read, I want to read for a purpose. And it really wasn't until I actually had my children, my firstborn was what really awakened within me of, I need to take this serious because she was born wide awake with her abilities. And it, it wasn't a great thing. Um, it was terrifying for her and a lot of sleepless nights and no, you know, every single light had to be on in our house. Um, and it was me working and helping her deal with it. Um, so through that, I had to finally really embrace, like, this really can't be my secret world anymore. Now there's two of us, God bless my husband, because he had no idea <laughs> what was going on. Um, but, you know, then I had to, to look into the boundaries, understanding boundaries, and understanding how to clear a house and clear a room and, and claiming your space. So my daughter was the one who then got me into, into that place. And, and that's what I still carry into my work now. And, and it's brought me to understanding why that heart energy is so important when you're dealing with spirit, when you're dealing with other dimensionals, because when you are just a, a vibrant light, which so many people that came here, that's what we just came here to be, you attract things. And sometimes you attract some things that don't like your light. Mm -hmm. And so an understanding that if you're not really liked by some and you attract others, then you need to really be in control of that and understanding well, what can come in and what can't. Yeah. So say more, like, how does that translate into boundaries? Like, can you just say more about that? Um, so you know, I worked with, um, 
you know, my grandmother came in and my daughter had never met her um, because she had already passed. And when she was a toddler, she started coming down at breakfast time. And and she said, I saw, I saw grandma last night. She was in my room last night. And um, this was a relationship that kind of went on for almost two years. And she, what she was doing was teaching my daughter how to put a bubble around herself. So she actually taught my daughter how to build a light in your heart and then how to visualize it coming out and then coming up over your head. And she just did it so beautifully. So I'll never take credit for that. That came straight from spirit, from my grandmother to my daughter, who was at that time, she was about three and a half years old when she was explaining that to me, but how to put the bubble. And she's like, I love grandma because she comes in and helps me put the bubble and she sings songs to me. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yes. So, you know, you know, so declaring your space is, Again, putting that shield up, getting really good in that solar plexus, doing, I do a lot of solar plexus. I I do it, I did it a lot in the beginning because this is where our real like strength comes out. And I put a lot of, again, you know, imagine, imagination is actually creation. So you imagine it sometimes first. So when I was um, feeling that things were getting a little bit too attached to me, I was struggling when I I really opened up and as an empath as so many, like we're all empaths, but when very sensitive empaths, it was a struggle for me to go out in large groups and group settings. And I was just feeling everything. So um, the solar plexus is great for that. So I I actually brought in almost like superhero sounding of metal, you know, like the Iron Man that, you know, where the metal is going up. And I, I created and built in my head, this very thick metal belt that comes around is like, vroom, vroom, and I, I actually hear it clicking in there. And then, you know, I, I put the sound, the visual of whoosh, you know, of this glass, cause I still want to exist. I still want to be able to see and move about in this world. So I always make it a clear glass, but that shield coming up and then I shield going down and up the back. And it's like a whoop, whoop, whoop. And I make those three sounds. And that puts me in this like very strong, like force field. And then another thing that I did as well. And actually I can't say that I did it. My spirit animal, my main, my main man <laughs> is a, is a cougar and I've spoken with him and he is just such a beautiful energy. And he, I was in the middle of a session and he jumped up on my stomach and he, he came right in my face and, um, and he looked at me and he said, from now on, I will be right here. And you know how a cat like curls around until it gets settled. So he like curled around and then he literally went into my solar plexus wow and so he's so he's there and a couple people have have seen has they've actually seen him and you know I'll tell you one person was work was doing an energy session on me and I kind of felt a little bit uncomfortable at first and my cougar literally came up out of my solar plexus and I could see him and he was growling in the person's face And so I said, just so you know, my cougar is in your face growling. So whatever you're doing, you need to stop it immediately. You know, so that, and, you know, empower me because it didn't necessarily need to come from me, but it came from my spirit animal and he was a guardian. (laughs) So those are the ways. And then, you know, the, the, the other thing is having those mantras. I'm really big on having that personal mantra and, and you can have a long one. And then you can have a really short one. You know, if, if you're having issues in your room or in your space, you can print out your long one and put it next to your bed and just say it each night before you fall asleep. But then you can have a short one too. If you just, you know, a couple lines of boom, before you start your day, you know, before I do every session, I have my mantra that I say that gets me really nice and grounded and protected and standing in my knowingness. Awesome. Yeah. And it can be so simple too. I like to, you know, really just use my breath as one Mm -hmm. way for me to just really connect and get grounded and then work on that energy bubble. I like to do that for myself as well. And, Mm -hmm. you know, in that way, we're just always operating from the sacred heart, you know, so we're, we're connected fully to the mother earth. We're connected to the heart of creator. We're combining that energy and that, you know, harnessing that within ourselves 
it could be so simple just taking three breaths to do that. And, you know, my friend Brian Besco, he's an amazing quantum energy healer as well. And he he talks a lot about that sacred breath. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, you brought up also just the, the way that healing is going right now with light, sound, vibration, it's frequencies, it's very quantum. Have you seen a shift even, you know, within yourself or out, out, you know, in the collective of people kind of like coming online with new types of energy, maybe healing tools or devices or anything like that? Um, I, I know that there's some, there's some, some devices that are coming out. Um, I know there's like that, that I Tara wand that's out. I actually purchased one, um, that's using uh, newer technology, but really, you know, just even for, for myself, I'm, I have shifted in the past, I would say six months. And, you know, I, I just had a session earlier today and 70% of my session was just using tonal singing mm -hmm. and because it was to get the body in alignment. So I'm, I'm using my voice, um, more than anything. And, and I feel like I'm, that's just almost where I'm shifting to go and to use more. Um, it's not about, you know, doing like the mediumship reading It's about, no, we're going to get in this frequency and, and, and start working within these bodies. Um, you know, another thing that I have noticed in terms of turning on is myself and other people I've known over the past, I would say three months, maybe three and a half months of um, feeling more integrated to a higher aspect of yourself, almost like and some more energy just like walked in and we integrated that into this vessel and feelings of being more grounded and rooted in ourselves. Does that make any sense? Have you been feeling that as Ab well? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, yeah. For me, especially lately, like as in like just the last two weeks, I feel like more has cleared and shifted and like a, a deeper connection to my own soul you know, like a soul, um, kind of like reintegration and, you know, clearing out past life stuff like traumas and, and memories that's enabled me to be more, um, feeling more whole and integrated, like you talked about. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, it feels like it's just getting better and better. <laughs> it is. Have you, so have you noticed any physical changes with that? Yeah, I have. And it's like some days I feel like, wow, this pain in my back is gone. And then like a new something will pop up. And yeah. the other thing that's been really interesting lately too, is I've, I don't know if you've noticed this in, in your field, but a lot of people around me are getting like having really strange accidents, like lots of hurt ankles, um, breaks, you know, shoulders, ankles, wrists, Brian took a wrench to the face, like, and like hit his nose and, you know, just really strange kind of like injuries happening. So have you yeah. noticed anything like that going on? I haven't noticed injuries, but I've noticed a lot of people having, um, an excess amount of drainage and mucus coming up. Hmm. And, and, you know, so I looked into that a little bit and some, uh, some people are coming forward as we are, as these energies are hitting us, we're coming more into like our, our crystalline based DNA within our body. And so to bring and anchor that in, we're literally clearing out. So all that mucus is almost like, you know, those parasites that we have in there, it's just coming out all that inflammation. Um, so that is one thing I've noticed with a lot of people. So, but that goes along with, you know, sometimes with those injuries, people, when they are having those injuries, it's to, okay, you need to focus on the body more, you know, sometimes spirit will do a spirit. Yeah. I know somebody that they had like four accidents in like one month because they weren't noticing and like just taking the time for themselves. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Spirit sometimes. Yeah, they come like, you know, we call them radical realignments. You know, you get a two by four over the head, you know, and it's just like, hello, we're re realigning you onto the path that you're supposed to be on, or we're going to put you in bed so you can rest so we can talk to you and work with you and upgrade you and activate you. And 
<laughs> so yeah, yeah it's yeah. just like you know it's so important to just stop and tune in as much as we can going inside internalizing less externalizing I say mm -hmm. I, I, I told a family member because they had been kind of complaining for a really long time that they were so exhausted and they were so tired and oh I just need more time for myself and but my life is so hectic and so busy and then they got really really sick so then they're like why am I so sick this is like going on a week and a half and I said, well, you know how you kept telling me that you were exhausted and you were so busy and all you wanted was just a day off to be able to home. Guess what? Wow, you just manifested <laughs> that. Yeah. I'm like, you didn't do it when you weren't sick. So then your body had to manifest this dis-ease <laughs> in it. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So another thing that I'm really fascinated by is, you know, in my community, and I've seen this for the past 10 years, I was introduced to the um, light, light language, you know, people that speak light language. Um, we have several people in our circle with the Star Knowledge conferences and things, at the events that we would do, the speakers would come in and they would speak this light language, and I know that you do as well. So I was wondering if you could just share a little bit with me, like, how does that work for you? Um, when you're speaking light language, who who are you, are you communicating with an, an, an energy that is speaking through you it like channeling or is it you as an aspect that's you know talking the language from maybe a place of origin in in the star realms like what is that for you oh okay so I have a couple different ways I'm going to answer that um so sometimes when I'm in a session um a being will come through and they will be speaking to me in their language. And so whenever they're speaking to me in their language, because they can absolutely interpret it into English, but when they're speaking in their language, that is my cue that I need to literally mimic exactly what they're saying to the client I'm working with because they need to hear that language. There's something in that that's going to ignite something, bring that memory back. Um, probably the most profound one was I was working on someone and their mother came through, but this is not a human mother. This was a mother from a different race a mother they had had. And she said in, in English, she said, he just needs to hear this. And then she proceeded to sing this lullaby in her language. And so, you know, the, the client had no idea, like I was, this was going on because I was doing energy and they had the little iPad on. So I just started singing this. And when the session was over and it was so hard because when they, their emotion comes through. So I'm like having tears going down as I'm singing this beautiful lullaby from their mother. Um, and when the session was all over, they sat up and they just looked at me and they said, that was my mother, wasn't it? Mm. And they just knew. And it brought them back to this place they had completely forgotten. So that's one, one layer of a language. But for me, so like when I'm doing the frequency singing that I was talking about earlier, I will hit a few notes and then I'll hit this pause and I will hear light language. And it's, and it's I have to say it. I have to repeat it. I, it's, it's like coming I say that I'm hearing it, but it's coming through me. Does that make any sense to you? It's really hard to kind of distinguish it. But I, I say a few words in the language, light language because it almost helps to anchor in. It anchors in that frequency. And again, it's not all language is frequency. You know, that's why you can, you can say a curse word laughing or you can say a curse word in anger. And it feels completely different, even though it's the same exact word. So sometimes when the light language is coming in, it helps to anchor in the energy that just came through. And then it's like, and then this, and then we bring in more singing. And then it's like, do, 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 do. And I've noticed as well, again, you know, I mentioned earlier about the surrender. So when I'm speaking light language, I I'm using my hands the whole time. And they're, they're like, they're making symbols or they're just duh, 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 or they're like holding in like, duh, 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 and then, I'll, duh, 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 you know, then I'll speak in language, but I'm making the symbols as well. And again, even when I'm doing that, it's just 
flowing and bringing that energy in. It's anchoring it down into this dimension that we're in. Um, so those are some of the different ways that I hear different languages and they come in. And, and again, sometimes they come in and they will use my own voice. Sometimes it's a version of my higher self coming in and doing that. Sometimes I am just repeating what I'm hearing. And there's only, <laughs> there's a few times where the language that they are saying to me, um, okay, I'll give you, for instance, it was an aquatic being. And again, they were just speaking their language because they needed to hear it. The, the, the client needed to hear it to bring that memory in, but they had no teeth and their language flowed like water. It was like flowing like water, but then some like, or like, you know, like doing that, like, and then I couldn't even produce anything else. And I attempted it and it was, and I, so I just looked at the being, I said, I am so, I cannot produce, I can't do it with the muscles in my mouth. I can't do it. And they were like, okay, <laughs> let me try. <laughs> I felt so um, bad. I just can't, I just couldn't do it. It was too hard. So I've had, a, I've had a few situations, you know, we do ceremony and we're in the sweat lodge and, you know, it, you know, it's just, it's such a great time to be really, really connected. And, you know, we're calling in the, the energies and the spirits and it's always a different influence because we're changing through the cycles of the moon and we're working with the symbols of the month and, you know, just activating those attunements. And so sometimes a light being will come in and I'll start speaking a star language, which is, it sounds very like mantis. So it's lots of clicks and chatter. It's, yeah. it's very interesting. <laughs> and I, is, I, that is, I have heard that mantid language. Yes. Yeah, and I don't always understand what they're saying to me. Does, do you find that happens with you as well? It's just, it's just channeling in and, you know, it's not decipherable for me, but I'm somehow making these audible things happen and I feel it. I mean, like you, you feel the vibration from it. Mm -hmm. Yes. You, I, I always understand the intention I understand, and it's almost like I'm getting visuals as to what they're doing. Um, you know, I so earlier today I was I was doing a session and light language was coming in, and I was again holding frequency, and it was we were pulling up and out some trauma out of the heart, and and literally the the frequency was to alleviate some grief that was in there, and to like to pull it up and then move it out and flow it. So I always understand the intention and the feeling behind it. Just like you said, you always understand that because again, like you're connecting in through the heart. And so that just raw emotion is there. Um, but, you know, again, it's like, it's not always important. My ego wants to know. Now then I will tell you this. One time I was, um, again, speaking a completely different language. I had no idea what I was speaking and the person that I was saying that to, I was like holding it at their crown, just blah, 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 like speaking this star language. They were interpreting it. They knew exactly what they were saying. Love that. So they were helping me because they knew that I had no idea. Oh, I love so that. As, so, awesome. as I was so as I was talking, they were speaking it in English. Oh, cool. And that's such great validation too. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, doing this work, we're just like, okay, you know, like, well, I don't know what's going on, but oh, thank God you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, I'll tell you one thing that, that I've learned, cause I, I worked with, um, a few beautiful, beautiful, um, you know, native American indigenous, um, star knowledge beings. And <sighs> I did not understand until they channeled it through me why ceremonies were so repetitive. They just keep saying the same verse over and over again. And then they're switched to another verse and they repeat that, you know, five or six times. It wasn't until I channeled it through that I understood it and it makes absolute sense why they repeat. They're repetitive with the same words because what they're doing or when they're repeating is again, words are frequency, they're bringing in that layer and it's almost like making it stronger, making it build and it's building and it's building and it's building and that's built. So we're gonna go to the next one and we're gonna build it and we're gonna build it. So I understand and, and 
it feels good to be repetitive within those chants or that ceremony because it's really anchoring in that energy and making it so much stronger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So absolutely. do you do you feel that as you are singing? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, you could almost kind of like align that with what we would call protocols. You know, there's a, a sort of way that we do it so that it, you know, we're we're doing it in a way that it's it's safe and it's, you know, we're, we're working with what we intend to work with. And, you know, cause sometimes if we shift it up a little bit or, you know, but really honestly, it comes down to sincerity. So if you're in your heart, you know, it's going to work, but you know, to, to like you, I think it, it just does, it builds that energy and it, it raises the frequencies so that spirit can come in and work with us. You know, we almost have to like raise up and then they have to kind of like balance out their energies to to come so we can meet in the middle so to speak and I feel like you know if you're doing those in that way it it does help to create that connection and hold Mm -hmm. it build a container around it for it to to build and and you know work with yeah I I agree completely you know it is it is it's like that delicate dance that we do with those different energies and we're finding this nice place to meet in the middle. And, and even with that, it's so important for discernment because again, like I'm, I'm reaching up as high as I am, I can in order to meet them and they're still coming down. So in between those two filters, there's still some discernment in, in between there. Absolutely. And it's sometimes it's, it's very frustrating. And I would love to know if you feel this as well. I, I can feel sometimes there's more to the language. There's more there that I'm not bringing in through. And it's frustrating because I can feel it. I can feel it in the, like the, I'm going to say like the background, like it's almost like the hidden layers. I can feel that, but I'm really struggling to bring it into this three third dimension. Yeah. So what's coming in around that is just the power of, you know, when two or more gather, it it really increases the intensity. And, Mm -hmm. you know, like along with that too, we don't always necessarily hold all the wisdom and and pieces of the puzzle within ourselves. So having others in the energy as well, you know, it's like, we're all doing this together. So um, yeah, I just, for whatever reason, the Trinity was always the most potent to have at least three. (laughs) All of a sudden it's like, whoa, okay, this is all, it's coming, all of it is coming through now. So I don't know if that helps or not, but maybe that's part of it is just that, you know, we can only hold what we hold and that's what can come through if, if we're doing that work by ourselves. I love that. I, I've, I've, you know, I've never thought of it that way that to bring in more, to anchor it in more would be able to come through. I like that. The Trinity. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, so I wanted to also share or have you share um, about your project that you're working with, with raising star seeds. And this is a podcast that you do with your co-host Heidi Pop. So I want to shout out some love to Heidi as well. And um, yeah, because, you know, this is such great work that you're doing and I truly appreciate it and value it. And I've gotten so so much out of certain episodes that you've held for, you know, your audiences. So I wanted you to introduce Raising Star Seeds to my audience as well and just share kind of like how it started and what your philosophies are and what you're kind of doing with that. Perfect. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you brought that up. And, you know, that is, you know, one thing that you and I are connected with is we're both boy moms and our sons are the same age. And, you know, so we're kind of going through those ebbs and flows at the same time. So it's been kind of nice to have someone to reach out to every now and then when, as we're mining, you know, the field of parenthood, Um, you know, the, the passion that came behind it was, when my daughter came in fully awake and you know she she looked at me when she was two and a half years old and she was just eating cereal and she just turned and looked and she said god and i chose you to be my mother and i said okay and then took a little bite of cereal and looked over and she said 
we chose you to be my mother because you would understand my special eyes. And then she took another bite of cereal. And then she looked over at me and she said, I came here to bring heaven to earth. So now what is great about that is we don't go to church. I've never, like at that point, I've never talked about heaven or God or, you know, I just had not, those were not languages. Those were not words in her vocabulary. And that to me is what stuck out the most. Um, you know, cause I always call it source or home or, you know, um, but at any rate, I was all alone when I was figuring out how to help this fully awakened child. And then I had my second child and they would sit there and talk about their past life memories. And they would joke cause they had, they would sit there and talk to each other. They were three and a half and two and a half and talk about the time before they came here, the in-between that they were in and they remembered what it looked like. And they remember choosing to come here and choosing to be brother and sister. And they remembered that they had, a, they were, they, well, they said they had a fight. They were fighting as to who was going to come down first because they're only a year apart. And, you know, so just witnessing this as a mother and just, and just then knowing like what my daughter was going through at school and, you know, seeing spirit at school and being telepathic and feeling all of her friends' emotions and not understanding how to differentiate between what was hers and theirs and carrying these. And um, I didn't want that for other parents. And it always used to frustrate me, you know, at one stage, my daughter was struggling in PE class and it wasn't because of PE, it was because there was a spirit and she saw him exactly how he died. So he was hung out in the gym and he knew that she could see him. So he was begging her to help him every day, all through PE class. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it's easy for mom at home saying like, well, we'll help him, like help him. And she said, how am I supposed to help him? And just start talking to him in the middle of kickball. You know, so it frustrated me that I couldn't go to these teachers and say, so this is the other aspect that my daughter's dealing with, why she's in your classroom. You know, she, she needs maybe an extra minute to go outside and ground, like let her take her shoes off and walk in the grass for a little bit. Um, and it frustrated, and I didn't want that. Like, I'm just so tired of it being this taboo subject of being sensitive and having these abilities, these amazing, amazing abilities. And so I approached Heidi and that's a whole other story. Heidi and I have a very a deep connection, um, goes back to childhood, even though we didn't meet each other until about a year and a half ago, um, but instantly knew um, we've, been in, we've been in other places together. So that energy field is there and our synchronicities in life are really kind of insane. Um, our life paths, how they synced up, but I just knew that she was needed to do this with me. And she's also raising these, you know, um, starseed children. And so that's how it came about. I just wanted a place for moms to not and dad, moms and dads and or aunts and uncles or neighbors or grandparents, you know, or, or even just adults themselves, because Alex Blue mentioned this to me and it was so great. He said, Abby, your show is not just for kids. It's also adults who are awakening. They're also raising star seeds. So, but, you know, but we do focus on helping the adult and helping the child and um, normalizing it and just giving them, we always say tools for your toolbox, you know, in, in teaching and um, like we talked about earlier, boundaries and creating that, you know, that space where we're not being, as my daughter, you know, being pinched in the middle of the night. So that's where we came from. And, um, you know, we just had someone on recently and she's using her abilities in forensic investigations. So it's not, you know, a lot of people think, oh, if you're a medium or psychic or you're intuitive, then you're just sitting in a kitchen somewhere and doing sessions. And there's just so many things that we can integrate these, these heightened senses in. And I mean, in almost any career that you choose, you know, like my son wants to be an engineer and he's connected with the mantids. And so I'm like, call in your mantids and channel in, like bring bring engine that engineering down here. So 
that's where it, that's where it came from. Um, and we we love doing it. It's again, it's however however we can be of service and help. That's just what we want to do. Yeah, you guys have done a lot of um, shows as well. And do you do like a normal like every week? Is there a, a a night of the week that you're doing a live, or how do people find you? Yep. So we've um, we've changed it now. We you know. We're both moms and we're trying to figure out what works best, but um, we've moved it to Thursdays at, at three o'clock, 12 o'clock um, Pacific, three o'clock Eastern. And um, that's when we go live. But again, they're all, you know, it's live and it's uploaded to YouTube and some other channels. Um, and our format now is we like to kind of just come together and, and just Heidi and I for the first, you know, few minutes of the show, just talk about how are we feeling the energy flow? Has there anything, you know, been going on that week in the world, energy wise messages coming through? And we just kind of go over that. And then we bring on guests that are already doing the work um, or, or being in their mission or teachers that they're already working with children. And so then we bring them in. So yeah, Thursdays, Thursdays is when we go live. Okay, awesome. Well, it's been really fun to connect with you. And it's actually Brian had a burning question. So this will be the final burning question for you, Abby. Okay. And his okay. question is, what will you be carving on your pumpkin for Halloween? Ooh, oh, I like that one. Mm. I'll probably do, um, I'll probably do because I have had Sasquatch in my backyard. I might carve out a Sasquatch on the front of it. Cool. <laughs> yes. How about how about you guys? What do you have on your pumpkin? Yeah, I'm picturing, I don't know, some like beams of light and stars, maybe, you know, something fun like that. Um, but mine never turned out very good. So <laughs> if I don't have some like blob that doesn't resemble a jack-o'-lantern, that's pretty normal. So <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, all good fun <laughs> yeah. so and I know you've got you've got an event coming up too with Liz Lori do you want to do a little plug for that real quick too yes absolutely yes so um we're going to be in Sedona December 11th through the 16th um so we'll be there for 12 12 for that event and what's really great about this is it's it's not a conference. It's it's a place where people can gather. It's gonna be a smaller group, but we can go out and you're with this high vibe tribe. You're with your tribe family. And we're gonna go and do a tour of the Grand Canyon together. We're gonna go and do vortex tours. So we're gonna, you know, jump on charter buses and it's like a vacation. But then, but it's a vacation that's sprinkled in between there with workshops. So, you know, it's, what's really not, we're not just going to sit and be lectured to it's, we're going to, people can go there and, and learn and, and grow and actually go home with some skills that they can then use when they're back at home. Yeah, that's so, so fun. And I think that's, you know, that's such a refreshing format. You know, I think we're kind of, we've seen the last of like sitting for hours and hours watching speaker after speaker you know, we're kind of ready for that immersion into nature and into the energies that are all around us and, and doing these experiences. And then having the love of a close tribe is always so wonderful too, you know, to, to build on relationships. And, you know, those are such precious times because, you know, as we're talking with each other, we're unlocking memories and clues and puzzle pieces and, you know, like you'll just be hanging out and you'll be like, oh my gosh, yes. You know, I hadn't put that together yet. And thank you so much. And, you know, so it's like, that's really fun for me. And that's why I love doing events too, is, um, you know, it's just a time to really uh, level up, you could say, in a really, really fun way. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I, I met you through doing, you know, events. So I, I love it whenever we gather, whenever the star sees, whenever these light beings, when we gather. Um, because again, we're all energy beings. We're like little batteries. So when all the batteries get together, we charge up. And like you said, like when that happens, a lot of activation can happen for a lot of people. And I know it's happened for myself. So 
I'm very excited to do it. The workshop I'm teaching is activating our avatars. So literally, you know, understanding what the energy feels like in your body and how we activate it and what that means. And so I'm excited to get everyone all activated and go to the Grand Canyon and see how that feels. <laughs> because again, you like, Everything is, everything is energy. Everything has memory. And so like when we, when we open up and tune in, we can tune into the past. We can tune in because it's so interesting. And this is where you get into time where, you know, the past, present, future are all happening the same exact time. So if you can get into those little time slips, you might be able to see something there. Oh my gosh. And God, you know, when you guys are out in, in the Grand Canyon area, there's so much out there that, you know, it's like waiting to be revealed because, you know, I've, mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but I've been down some rabbit holes and there's some interesting spots there that have been sort of, let's just say, disappeared and hidden. So that's fun too, is just tuning into, okay, what what's here? What wants to be revealed? And who knows what you might, might activate out there too. I love that statement, what wants to be revealed. I Because that's exactly what happens. It chooses. The land, the energy chooses when it's ready to be revealed. Mm-hmm. Aw. Yeah. Well, hopefully I'll I'll make it out there to be part of that. I don't know, you know, what's going on in my little timeline here yet, but that sounds so fun. And I'll leave links and everything in the comments section, but is there anything else that you wanted to share before we wrap up for today? <sighs> yes, actually, I do want to share something. Um when the world is feeling a little bit chaotic or a little bit loud, just go in that nice, quiet spot in your heart because I feel like it's probably going to get a little bit loud here sooner than later. And know that you can just just kind of just go to that quiet, that inner child voice that's in there. It's okay just to be there. And you don't need to listen to all the noise and all that chaos that might be coming our way and find the others find your tribe yep awesome abby well it's been really fun to connect with you today thank you so much for taking time out of your busy life to share some light and love here with me today and uh, we'll definitely be watching for you um on raising star seeds and see you on down the road here real soon thanks so much jen i really appreciate it thanks guys all right awesome take care see ya okay bye